Welcome to today's video and welcome to LLMware. This is the first in a series of fast start videos. What we're gonna do over the course of the next, probably um, you know, less than 10 minutes, is really ground you in LLMware, help you get set up, help you install, and get ready to start writing some code. This is a, a series that we've prepared for people who are just starting to get into some form of LLM-based development and interested in RAG, interested in building workflows, interested in how you can programmatically start working with you know, locally running LLMs. We want to make it really simple to get started. One of our philosophies with LLMware is we want to be really simple to start but then also really simple to scale as well. So we'll try to give you some of the kind of the underpinnings so that you can start building some really complex and really powerful kinds of algorithms using LLMware pretty quickly. But just to quickly ground you, what's behind me is our LLMware repository. This is a great place to get started. I'm gonna very quickly ground you to it. And then I'm gonna take you into this section that you see right here called Fast Start, which is really gonna be the orientation point for all the videos that are gonna follow. Before we do that, I'm just to quickly scroll through some of the things that we've got here in the repository. First thing I wanted to say up front, we are very, very open to people of all skill levels. A lot of people are out all over the world trying to figure out how AI works. It is moving really fast. And what we're trying to do is to create a very open community. There is no such thing as a dumb question. So please come join us on Discord. There's a group of people from absolute beginners just trying to figure things out to really senior and experienced developers who are building you know, industrial grade applications and everything in between. It's a diverse community from all over the world. So please come join us on Discord. We look forward to seeing you there. If you're watching this video, you've probably already found us on YouTube. We've got a whole bunch of videos. Go check them out. Every single one of them has code and has actionable recipes that you can start working on. And then finally, check us out on Hugging Face if you want to get some more information about any of the models that we're going to be talking about. That is our landing page. You can get all sorts of details and information about any of the models that you can find anywhere in our repository. Just to quickly give you a very quick orientation under key features, this is where we start to provide some basic orientation to the major classes, the key objects in LLMware. And for each one of these, underneath it is a really nice little code snippet to illustrate it with code. So you can start getting oriented in some of the key concepts like how the model catalog works and how to look up and start accessing and loading a model a library and a query. How do you start organizing and indexing information and then running queries against it? How do you start using prompts and running inference and connecting knowledge into it? There's information about our models and then information about how you start connecting to underlying data stores. So lots of good little code snippets to help get you started. But one of the things that we found is there's such high interest all over the world. And there are a lot of people who've done lots of, you know, important development in JavaScript or in Java or in Go. You've done front end work. Maybe you've built core back end systems, but you're new to how does LLM based development work. And so what we've put together, I'll actually flip up. It's right at the top of the repository is a fast start section. And in this fast start section, we want to walk through first getting installed, getting up and running, and then we're gonna walk through a series of six ready to run examples that really help you progressively build up a lot of the component skills in how RAG works, how LLM based workflows work. And over the course of probably an hour or two, you can watch these videos, you can start getting your hands on some of this code, and you can start writing and developing some of your own really interesting kind of RAG recipes really in the course of just a couple of hours. So before we dive into any of those examples, and we're gonna dive through them in a whole series of videos, you're welcome to jump in and jump out. But what we wanted to do first is let's start with how do you install LLMware? If you've looked at the repository before, we launched in around mid-October. We've gone through around 15 releases. About every week we put out a, a new pip install release. We just upgraded to 0.2. And there are a lot of significant changes and enhancements. So even if you've looked at it before, hopefully these instructions will be helpful for you as you're looking to install and move up to 0.2. It's real simple, pip install LLMware. If you prefer, you can go ahead, obviously you can clone the repository. From a platform support, you know, we test on Mac platforms, both Metal as well as x86. We do test even on x86, if that's something that you're still using. On Windows, on Linux, we prefer Ubuntu 22. That's where we do the most testing, but generally speaking, most modern releases of Linux, the platform should work as well. You should have at least 16 gigabytes of RAM. 
And again, one thing to really note on the Python version, we support 3.9, 3.10, 3.11. We have not yet moved to support 3.12 because some of our dependencies are not yet on 3.12. And if you are pip installing, it should pull down the latest version, but if in any part of your install system does require a version number, then please pick a version number of 0.2.0 .0 or higher because the examples that we're gonna show actually are built on that latest code. So what we're gonna walk through, once you've actually installed LLMware, what we're gonna walk through in this series are six ready to run examples. We actually package sample files and all of the dependencies associated with it. So you should be able to copy and paste any of these files, run, and the code should be up and running. So what we're gonna do first, the first sort of section, the first three examples are really about learning some of the key component classes and some of the key steps. So first, it will be building a library, which is the core step of ingestion. It's how do you start to convert a pile of files, PDFs and PowerPoints and Word documents and text files, markdown files, image files, how do you start taking that content and transforming it into an AI-ready knowledge base? And, and in LLM, where we call that a library. So we'll walk you through an end-to-end -end example of how do you create a library, how do you start adding and ingesting files into it, and then how do you work with that library once it's been instantiated. Second example then is building on top of that, once you've created your library, your basic knowledge store, it's how do you start to apply an embedding model to it? You've probably heard a lot about natural language queries. That's what everybody ultimately wants to achieve. So the key recipe to do this is to take an embedding model, you apply that embedding model to the text that's in your library that's been stored and indexed in a whole set of text chunks. You attach vectors to it. You create vectors as the output of that embedding model. You then store those vectors, and then you can use those vectors to enable semantic retrieval and natural language query. So that's the second example, is to show how to go through that process. And then the third example is, how do you start connecting to LLMs? And that's prompts and the model catalog. And we'll show how do you start looking up models? How do you load those models? And then what are some basic recipes for running inferences and building prompts you know, using those models? Once we've got those three components, kind of the core building blocks, if you will, in section two, the last three examples are really about how you start putting those pieces together. Example number four is the most basic RAG recipe, retrieval augmented generation which is fundamentally about how do you connect knowledge, like the knowledge that you've put in your library and your embeddings, how do you start extracting some of that? How do you start connecting it into a prompt? So then you can start asking questions to an LLM based on your own documents. So in the fourth example, we're gonna show you just that very, very basic recipe with a text query. In the fifth example, we're gonna build on top of that with something that's really the core of what most people look to do with retrieval augmented generation, which is natural language queries using um, the semantic embeddings that we created in the second example. And then finally, in the sixth example, we're just gonna start building on that. We're gonna start layering in some more pieces where perhaps you have a more complex set of retrieval strategies, where you wanna do some fact checking. We're gonna start bringing some of those components together as just a launching off point then to start moving on to the other 50 examples that we have in our repository and starting to do more complex industrial grade kinds of RAG scenarios. So we would encourage you, pip install and you're up and running, work through these six examples and really over the course of an hour or two, step by step by step, you're gonna be able to build up the core skills to start building RAG and LLM based workflows. Now a couple of other notes before we conclude this session. First on models. In our model catalog, you're gonna find over 50 models. It includes all the API-based models, things like OpenAI. It includes all the models you know, on Hugging Face, on Sentence Transformers, a lot of those open source models you can bring in. It's also gonna feature a lot of CPU-based models that, that we actually provide that have really been optimized for RAG. Those are the Bling and the Dragon series. Again, you'll hear those words, you'll see a lot more about it as you go through some of the examples. But it's one of the notable things about our library is we really believe fundamentally in small, specialized, open source models and the ability to run and build a lot of these workflows locally or in a private cloud environment. Databases, any kind of serious uh, data pipeline ultimately has to be underpinned by some type of persistent data store. We actually provide a collection database. So when you parse a document, you're breaking it up into text chunks, we store that in a database. Now we support three databases out of the box, SQLite, 
Mongo, or Postgres. Mongo and Postgres do require some install. You'll find at the top of our repository Docker Compose scripts that make it really, really easy if you have Docker running on your machine to install Mongo or install Postgres. But for the fast start examples, um, we're gonna use SQLite, which is fully embedded database. It's file-based, doesn't require any separate install. So again, once you've done your pip install, you are ready to go. Next on vector databases, we actually support many, many, and the list grows every single week. Uh, we're trying to support all of the options that our community is asking for. Uh, but what we're gonna do again for the fast start to make it super simple, we're gonna use Face, which is again, an, it's an embedded file store doesn't require any separate install. So the combination of using SQLite and Face, nothing else to install for the fast starts, but we're gonna show you how easy it is then as you start moving into a you know, more complex set of examples, how easy it is then to actually flip the switch and start moving into some more scalable vector stores as well as collection database stores. So with that, um, hopefully this is a helpful introduction. And again, just as a reminder, just above me in this repository, you can actually find all of these examples and each example we're gonna walk through in a separate video, but you can see they've been really annotated with a lot of comments, lots of print statements so you can see on the screen what it's doing and really trying to illustrate the core concepts and help you get up and running fast. So again, please come back, check out the fast start section on LLMware and please feel free. Uh, we're gonna have videos on each of these examples, mix and match, come back to any that you'd like to hear some more details about and um, happy coding and hope everybody gets off to a great start with LLMware. You run into any issues, as I said, please come to our Discord community and um, ask any questions that you have. Thanks again, everybody. Hope everybody has a wonderful day. Take care.